Welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk to you about forgiveness. So the Lord, the early hours of the morning, gave me a word forgiveness. Not because I needed to forgive anybody, because I was like, Lord, I've forgiven everybody. But because of the freedom that he wanted me to share with you about how forgiveness can really set you free. Let's go. So today I'm going to be talking about forgiveness, but not, not, not just forgiveness, but the other areas that kind of really help us move the needle in our lives. So my name is Lynn Dealer, aka Lee. If you are new, welcome. You are welcome. So I'm going to be looking at my notes because I actually wrote this now. Like I'm going to share this because the Lord actually told me, tell the people to resist the enemy not just in spiritual warfare we always talk about spiritual warfare the enemy is after me the enemy is after me i'm seeing stuff i'm seeing stuff no those things do exist but there's other subtle ways that the enemy works in terms of putting you under bondage basically putting you under bondage with small little habits that you think are not actually big habits things such as forgiveness things such as bitterness things such as such as jealousy envy um you name it you know the enemy uses he comes in very subtle only to boom you know so let me read the very nature of satan is pride competition bitterness high imagination have you ever felt when you're sitting down all of a sudden you're having these thoughts coming at you giving you giving you like poking you those are called fairy darts. You know, the word of God says, resist the enemy and he will flee. You know, be aware of the fairy darts that the enemy throws at you. I forgot the name of the scripture. But fairy darts are literally arrows. Imagine an arrow keep on being thrown at you. And that's what the enemy uses with his uh, demons. The other, the one third of the angel that actually went with him. They use fairy darts to put in suggestions, accusation, just a whole lot of nonsense just to have you thinking about other things outside of your purpose so those are suggestions they're not the truth they might be true but they the enemy will magnify them you know he'll make them worse as they're supposed to be and it's so important not to think you know not to take everything you think seriously you know as soon as you start thinking those things you need to meditate on second corinthians 10 verse 4 that declares that we are humans but we do not wage as human beings you know the word of god in ephesians 6 says that our sorry our weapons are not flesh and blood but they are spiritual you know we are killing every high imagination every lofty thing that sets us off against the knowledge of god i think i'm mixing my scriptures here but second corinthians 10 verse 4 to 5 actually tells us that we are humans fact but we do not wage as humans do so when you have a thought of unforgiveness you know if you're thinking about somebody that did you wrong oh my god listen you know and then you have deep-seated uh, envy and jealousy about somebody else's life like you scroll on their social media you don't even click like you know because you're jealous because you envy you know you're hovering the spirit you might not think that spirit is actually even a spirit or even serious but that is one of the ways that the enemy slowly comes into you and the next thing you know you are harboring a sin a besetting sin of unforgiveness of bitterness and next thing you know you're hating and you your demeanor starts to change it changes your countenance because the goal of the enemy is to kill still and destroy he doesn't care about you he will give you all types of suggestions suggestions that even make sense but you need to resist the nature so this this video i actually want to share with you about resisting the nature of the enemy we all know the nature of god we see him in the scriptures he is loving he is kind he is peaceful he is a provider he is jehovah rapha he is our healer he is jehovah adonai he is our lord our god he is jehovah Gebo. you know everyone in the bible met with god at a certain space and that's how we can attribute to his nature Okay, we look at the scriptures in the book of John where Jesus says, the father has sent me so I can come to you. 
you know. So through the Father, the love that the Father has for us by giving us Jesus to be a sacrifice for us by being put on the cross so he can be an atonement for our sins. That is how much the Lord loves you. The Lord normally doesn't come at you with condemnation, poking, poking, poking. So the reason why the forgiveness element came into my remembrance, I think the Lord was saying, element came into my remembrance, I think the Lord was saying to me, tell the people that being a forgiving child of god will set you free i'm sure everybody has heard the term that when you harbor forgiveness you're not helping anybody you're just destroying yourself because nobody cares okay nobody cares yes they did you wrong but nobody cares okay so the point is to not harbor deep-seated feelings that are not of god your job is to love one of the last commandments that the lord that Jesus shared with his disciples in John 13 was a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another if you look at how Jesus loved even when people were ridiculing him he still loved them because he still I think it's about keeping the main thing the main thing he reminded himself that oh I already know what's in a man's heart oh I shouldn't be surprised you know because he created us you know but he knows that the Prince of Air is infiltrating our minds and our hearts to think some type of way so he's not surprised when we are bitter he's not surprised when we have deep-seated uh, secrets or unforgiveness that does not surprise him because he even tells his disciples you are just like your father the father of all lies it's in his nature to lie okay it's in his nature to deceive it's in his nature to be prideful to lie okay it's in his nature to deceive it's in his nature to be prideful there's nothing he can do about it it's literally in his nature so every time the enemy comes at you with suggestions accusation it's not because he just came out of it that's what he does for a living you know when somebody asks you what you do for a living for example i'm in it that's what i do that's what i do like from in terms of my my corporate job that's what i do if somebody tells you that, um, oh, maybe you can do this. No, but that's not in my job. That's not my passion. My, my desire is to do IT. So maybe that's not a very good example, but it's like saying, uh, you are a very quiet person. You're very introverted. Yes, that's, that's in my nature. So when the, when the Lord was telling the disciples, you are just like your father. I think he was referring to to the to the pharisees or the religious leaders or even judas i don't remember in the book of john you are just like your father he is in his nature to lie so please today if you have any deep-rooted unforgiveness unnecessary hovering let it go listen your skin will be clear you got more energy listen the lord can only pour from you when you have poured out anything that's not holy our father is holy so that means we are to be holy just as he is holy he understands obviously that we are living in a fallen world that we are prone to deceit we are prone to jealousy but as soon as we find those thoughts or those weapons hovering in our minds we need to resist them at all costs because guys not only those things will breathe even worse things but they're just not worth it they're not worth it so let me just check something else what, did, what else did i wrote okay so i also said that i declare i won't harbor those feelings i will not be ruled by my feelings i will arise even when i don't feel like it so you know in the morning guys i'm not i'm not an early morning person but i love the morning you know i think the morning is the best time to kind of set the tone for your day and this morning i did exactly that and the lord gave me this declaration he even said i declare to think of david when he was on the run from saul when he could have killed saul but he didn't kill saul because he was after the he, he was a man after god's heart his goal was to always please god now we're not saying david was perfect guys but we are saying that his nature at that age at that time was not to touch the anointed even the even though the anointed wanted to kill him you know the word of god says touch not the anointed literally you are you and i are anointed when somebody touches you there's gonna be there's gonna be something to behave hey, the lord will vindicate you so you shouldn't fight for your betters because at the end of the day the lord did vindicate um david you know saul died unfortunately his son jonathan also died very bad 
but you should not go out of your way to fight for your battles the lord goes before you psalm 23 says that he goes before you surely surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of our life and then i also said that kind of heart and persistence is on is only possible through God. The only way David got through the trials and the many years of battle with Saul and the Philistines and having his uh, people murdered, trying to protect him, even his son, you know, disobeying him, even when he sinned, it only could have been God. He was a repenter. He understood that he did wrong. Even when he was called out, he didn't run away from his sins. He was always after God's heart. So imagine you in your life, whatever area of your life that you feel like you're just not winning, persist with the Lord, persist with God, partner with the Holy Spirit. He will give you the desires of your heart. Take delight in the Lord. You know, Psalm 37 verse 4 says, take delight in the Lord and he will give you all the desires of your heart so i want to also say blow after blow you know i'm talking about david here blow after blow those that help him in exile were killed his friends were killed but you know what he continued not to touch Saul, even when he had the opportunity to touch him because his goal and objective was to please the father because he was a man after god's heart so i also said you're grateful 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 that i'm not where i used to be grateful 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 that i do not uh flinch when people do not support or do not do whatever you know as remember as teenagers as young adults you know we we hold so much weight on people's affirmations and people's acknowledgement and their support even your own friends even your own colleagues we hold so much weight on people. Some people will not support you just because it's you. Okay, this word just came into my remembrance. I remember I was watching a video, I think it was last year. You know someone is not gonna like you just because it's you. If it was anybody else, if it was anybody else, honey, they would have liked it, but nobody is gonna like it just because it's you. So do not think it's strange when you do not get support. Do not hold the uh, harboring unforgiveness from people who don't support you or maybe things are just not going as well. Do not be somebody who hugs the, that, that, those types of feelings because there's nothing there. There is literally nothing there. So I want you today to resist the nature of enemy. This is how it looks like. Let's say I'm sitting down and all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, I'm all alone. No, you're not alone. The Holy Spirit is with you. Oh, oh look at them. I can't believe they have that. The Lord has given me more than enough. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I think I will create because I was called to create. Um, you know, so, so what I'm trying to say is, Whenever you, when, whenever you are starting to feel sorry for yourself or you, or you start changing your countenance um, because of your circumstances, because that's what the enemy does. Even when, even he did it with Jesus in Matthew chapter 4. He tried to give him suggestions. Look at your environment, Jesus. Why don't you stand up and I'll give you the whole city? And Jesus is like, no. You know, my father owns the city on a hill. And then he says, uh, why don't you eat this? And I will make you a king. Oh no, I am already king. So he was he was going at the enemy with his word. Because the enemy only the only thing the enemy can do, guys, at the end of the day, let's just keep it plain. He can only give you suggestions. But it's up to you to resist him. But if you don't resist him, you'll be his bait. Like he baited Eve, he will bait you. So whenever you're starting to feel like, oh did Lord, did he really say that? Those with ears, we need to open them, okay? So anyway, I was hoping to just share this word with you because it was very, you know, the Lord told me to, came to me early, early in the morning and I quickly wrote it down. So in the morning, guys, if you if you like me and you're a dreamer and you receive vision and, you know, confirmation, revelation, always have a journal next to you. Wherever you go, I mean, I take this book with me. I have other journals, obviously, but, um, right now this is the journal that i'm using and i love this journal because it has my favorite scripture and the last quarter it was this journal now i have this journal and i have a host of other journals 
Because it's good to look back and see what the Lord has done. It's good to draw, because that's how the Holy Spirit speaks. He speaks through confirmation. He speaks through His Word. He speaks through the Holy Spirit. You start seeing things that you never like. What am I remembering in Scripture? I go, what? What's going on? And write it down. And as soon as you write it down, then you start seeing what, what, what? Basically, that's how He speaks. Okay, that's why you need to read your Bible. Do not rely on someone. Yes, people can confirm, affirm a prophetic word, but God speaks to you. You can get a prophetic word. You don't need a word from somebody else. You alone, we all are now seated on high. We have been given the authority. We are sitting on the right hand of the Father. We all have the same power that Jesus gave us, you know, that he has that raised him from the dead. We all have it. It's all about grabbing a hold of it. Okay, so guys, I'm just getting so excited. But anyway, get in your word and stop harboring deep-seated uh, resentment, jealousy, envy. Not gonna go anyway. I'm not gonna go anyway. Anyway, thank you guys. Have an awesome day. Bye.